they might well feel that with hindsight it was the right thing to do but it's very easy to do something and look back and say that was wrong but do you think they should have done it well uh, probably safer to keep quiet but I, that doesn't mean to say I'm condemning the fact that they didn't because as I say they perhaps knew other facts that I didn't know about yes thank you very much Mrs Tomlinson <laughs> Jerome Lynch your next witness yes I call Peter Thompson you were the editor of the Daily Mirror how long ago the Sunday Mirror yes um, in 1985-86 thank you I think you um, gave up that job and you've started writing yourself Yes, I as did. a full-time job. I did. And you've written um, two books, one about Diana and one about Fergie. Yes. Was any effort made to prevent publication of the books that you made by the Royal Household? No. Or did you even receive a letter from them saying, please don't? No. Do you think it was right for you to have published that material? Ethically correct, yes. Absolutely ethically correct. We were dealing with, uh, certainly as far as uh, the Diana book is concerned, with the with her position and the future king of England yes in your experience had the um, information that you gained from the royal household uh, had they lied about their earlier days and their relationship certainly yes members of Prince Charles staff had painted a totally false picture of this marriage to me and other members of the press did you think that that was important the fact that they lied I think it was indicative of the way the royal family operates and uh, the bad advice they get from many of their advisors to try to put a huge uh, band-aid over this, this rift which was uh, so, so visible to anybody who met the Prince and Princess of Wales in those years. Yeah, but do you think they have a right to a private life? They have a right to privacy, of course, but we don't have a privacy bill in this country. It's not against the law to, uh, to make inquiries about people like the Prince and Princess of Wales. So it's books like this, you see, that uh, have been created because of that interest, hasn't it? They've been created out of the deception. There's an area, of, um, an atmosphere of deception and deceit that seems to surround the royal family because so many people have got the wrong idea about them. They're really quite normal people. The people who work for them, especially in some kind of higher office, tend to assume an authority and an importance that they shouldn't have. Mm. If the Prince and Princess of Wales had been totally honest about their relationship, and if Prince Charles hadn't been having a relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles, and if one or two other things hadn't happened, then there wouldn't have been any need for these books. Yeah. A lot of ifs there, a lot of ifs. Yeah. I'm afraid there are, yes. Yeah. It's not the way it was at all, of course. Well, that's right, but that's not what they were saying was happening, No, it? the opposite. Oh. Prince Charles got very, very angry at, the Buck at Buckingham Palace one evening, about the trivia of the reporting about his private life and he said I don't see what, what possible interest it can be uh, as to the brand of marmalade I have on my toast in the morning and he got read around the, uh, the gills about this um, because he was he maintained he was worried about the trivia of course what he was worried about was any kind of investigation of his yeah. private life which might reveal the illicit affair he was having with Camilla Parker Bowles. In your experience, how often did the royal household themselves leak information to the press? In my experience, yeah. in my knowledge, certainly uh, on a frequent basis. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ms. Belson. Mr. Thompson, you have been a journalist. Are you now a full-time writer? Yes, I'm a writer and a journalist. Perhaps you'd like to tell us um, how much you earn from your two roll books. No, I wouldn't. Why not? Well, it's something you can find out, of course, because you have a right to investigate me if you want to. But I, don't, I can say no comment to a question like that. If one of your employees, or someone who worked for you, um, went and told a newspaper how much you got paid, how would you feel about that? I'd get over it. Yes, that's not quite the question I was asking. Um, would you feel it was something that he or she should not have done? No, I'd feel I'd been wrong in hiring him in the, in the first place. When you hire someone, do you have a confidentiality clause in the contract? Certainly not. Why not? Because if I'm such a bad judge of character hmm. that I can't decide who's going to be truthful and honest and somebody good to work with, and if they have no respect for me, hmm. then there's something wrong with the situation. I shouldn't be hiring people, or I would be a very bad boss. It's not quite the same, isn't it? Let's suppose you hire someone and, let us say, the mirror, your former employees, are interested to learn how much you're earning. They come to your current or former employee and say, all right, how much is he earning? 
You went, oh, well, let's sweeten it a bit. Do you think that's all commendable behavior? Pick up any copy of Private Eye, you'll find it all in there. Journalists leak about journalists all the time. Hmm. Uh, why don't you tell us then? <laughs> because I have the right to say no comment. Um, you also wrote a book about your former employer, didn't you? When you worked for Robert Maxwell. Correct. And I think it's this book here. Maxwell, a portrait of power. Yes, that's it. That's right. Now, that was not very popular with uh, Mr. Maxwell, was it? No, he went eight. Yeah, I think that's right. He sued you for libel. He injuncted first. We had that lifted because he lied to the court. Mm. And then he sued for libel. You read um, Miss, Mrs. Berry's book. I saw it on sale in America last year, and I had a quick read in the bookshop. Mm. And I've since had another look at it. I'm, I'm not familiar with every, with every page of it. You're aware of the, um, the reasons why it was possible to ban publication, in fact, worldwide, but successfully only in this country, that there was a confidentiality clause in the contract? There was, yes. yes. And can you see any reason why that con contract should not be upheld? Every reason in the world, yes. Why is that? Well, it's a bad contract. So if it's a bad contract, you shouldn't be upheld? That's right. It should be torn up and thrown away. Right. So did you have a good or a bad contract with your employer, Mr. Maxwell? I had no contract with him. Well, everyone has a contract. You know that as well I as I do. I had a contract with Mirror Group newspapers. Yeah. under which you would expect them to pay you. Which they did. Yeah. Let's suppose they'd come along and said, we don't like this contract, we think it's a bad contract, let's tear it up and not pay you. You'd the unions have... often did. Yeah, you'd have objected. Well, I might have objected, but I wouldn't go to law about it. Do you understand what the contract is? That it's a promise. I it's, do. A, it's, a, it's an exchange of promises. Exactly. Yeah. I, and for instance... people break promises. Yeah. Let's suppose you go to the hospital, and you're seen by a doctor and a nurse in the course of their employment by the National Health Service, and they decide to tell a newspaper about all the interesting things they find out about you. Do you think they should be restrained? What would I have to hide? I don't know. You might have some fascinating diseases. Well, I'd like to know about them. I mean... <laughs> all right. You go to a lawyer. I really think you're talking about shame or guilt or something. No, I'm but... talking about confidentiality. I'm talking about the things that you might want to be kept private, like how much you earn from your book. Well, I'm, I'm saying to you, you're welcome to find out. In the same way as if somebody really wants to find out about my medical record, they're quite welcome to go and try. Yes, but I'm not going to tell them about it, necessarily. They can't try, can they? Because it's confidential. Of course confidential. they can. It happens all the time. What about a lawyer? Um, if, for instance, you were to go to a lawyer, let us say, of a matrimonial affairs, do you think the lawyer should keep quiet about the details of that? The lawyer probably will keep quiet, yes. No, should he? Well, he should, yes, because he's being hired in a professional capacity. So what you're saying is the difference between these people who should keep quiet, the lawyers and the doctors, and Mrs. Berry, she's not a professional and therefore she's free to break her contract as she wishes. No, I don't think so at all. I just think that the, that particular contract is this old master-servant thing wearing new clothes and being called confidentiality. I mean, the, 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 the gulf between the heir to the throne and the housekeeper is so enormous that it's not comparable with me going to a lawyer or anything else. Thank you very much. It's now time for our jury to weigh up what they've heard tonight. But before they retire to consider their verdict, I'd like both sides to present their closing statements. Jane Belson. Members of the jury, the person we haven't heard from is Wendy Berry. And you may wonder, why did she write the book? Did she write it for money? Was it revenge? Was it because she thought it was in the public interest that such a book should be written and published? For Wendy Berry to do it is wrong. Why should the book remain banned? because it doesn't just affect Wendy Berry. The royal family has something like a thousand full-time employees working at nine establishments. If Wendy Berry is allowed to get away with it, then it simply encourages all the others to think they don't need to be bound by the terms of their contracts. I'm not for one minute suggesting that any of them would want to do it, but it's setting that sort of precedent. Therefore, even though it may seem foolish that this one book should remain banned, I say to you it isn't, and it should remain banned for those very good reasons. Thank you. Mr Lynch. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. We don't live in an island anymore. We live in a world where the world can communicate with us. You can't just isolate yourself from the rest of the world. Why on earth should the Latvians know about it and we shouldn't? What a load of nonsense. Nonsense. Now, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a confidentiality clause in contracts. Of course you should. If you had a, 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 a nanny looking after your children, 
You wouldn't want them to go off and tell all your neighbours or the press or whatever it is what you do in your private life. Of course you wouldn't. And you'd be entitled to rely on that. But if you go out to the press yourself and say, hey, this is me. I've just had an adulterous affair with the neighbour next door. And what's more, I've done this and that and the other. Then what on earth right do you have to rely on that contract? Now, I'm not saying, as I've said before, you cannot say, and it's not right, that somebody who is in employment, there must be confidentiality to a degree. But there must be limits. There must be limits, surely. It's your opportunity, your opportunity to say to the royal household, come on, get real, get a life, and let this woman of 65 with her grandchildren come home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Lynch. What will our jury make of it all? We'll find out when we listen in on their deliberations. So join us after the break. Welcome back to Nothing But The Truth. Should the Royal Housekeeper's Diary be banned in Britain? That's the question tonight. Before we hear our jury's verdict, let's see how they reached it. I don't think there's anything in the book that has been proved so far. There's any reason why the people in Britain should not read it. Really? Yeah, and the whole rest before. of the world can read yeah, it. I think yeah. it is about it's our got own to come back to this employment clause. clause. But that is a yeah. different issue. No, I don't no. think it is. And I think no, that if, if this ban is lifted, all future contracts in this country are going to be worthless. Absolutely. Nobody's actually ready to say, you know, if there is a problem, to say, you know, confidentiality I, I know it has been breached because um, you know the woman signed a contract but it's not saying that she's not saying anything in the book that we don't know already nobody's ready to state that fact it's like locking the stable door after the horse is bolted mm. isn't it and you can go to another country and get it so you've got easy yeah. access to it but, if you but want it to justify the you know, by that absolutely that not i totally agree she was out of order but the point is the book has been written yeah. but it was Whether... arrived that through a breach of contract and you can't justify that and by no, default don't it must be it. it must be banned no you can't justify but it's, it's, it's already banned. banned yes it is that's already banned, banned. It's it's banned. banned. It's just, that's right yes. should it remain banned or should we now say Hold on, everyone else has got it. Why can't we have it? I was just going to say it should be banned on the grounds of being yet another royal book. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to reveal your secrets, that's perfectly sure. up to you. Yeah. But if your mate comes and says, oh, well, she did this, did that, yeah. you, you've you got fully entitled to say yeah, to it. Yeah, but they've already done that. They're saying, they 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 no, we're not doing that. Then surely they should be exposed for the liars that they are. <laughs> Haven't Prince Charles and Lady Di brought it on exactly. themselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah but they, they yeah. choose to court the the press, the the bedfellows with That's the press. They yeah. use the press when it suits them, but when it doesn't suit them, they cry about it. It's backfired basically. They they wanted to use the press for themselves, and it turned into a complete slang match. And so they lost they did their dignity, which they shouldn't do as royals. They set an example. Should she profit from it as well? No, she's no, not. no, she's I don't. Yeah, but I don't. She's not she's not she's not no, I think any money well, should be vetoed, or maybe given to charity. Yes. Certainly not to Prince so Charles. She, she no, 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 certainly not to Prince Charles or any of his trusts, because that simply gives him then the profit for something. You can't say that because she's done it. I don't. I don't think it matters whether she's in it for the money or not. I don't think that really matters. I mean. And I don't think, you know, we're in the business of protecting the royal family here. I'm, I don't no. want to protect no, the royal family. I mean, they're inbred descendants of robber barons, you know. I mean, I have no interest in protecting them. What I'm interested in protect is in protecting our own freedoms, right? So, look, I mean, if, you, if your employer said to you, your contract is meaningless, I'm not going to pay you sick pay, you've been off ten weeks, mm. uh, and it says so in your contract, that's, that's where it affects us, and that's mm. why freedom of contract is important. Surely, if they... Yeah. If they allow the book to be sold in this country, she's going to think, oh, I've got away with it. I'll come back to England. I don't see the point in it not being, you know, it, it being banned in Britain. If everywhere in the world can read it, you know, and you can get it on the internet and anywhere right, else, yeah. we might as well read it. After all, it is our royal family, and we've probably read it all before anyway. Contracts get broken every day by big business. Pro politicians, you talk about promises and contracts. Politicians break promises every single day of the week. They get away with it because they're big business or whatever, but this woman won't get away with it. If you have someone working for you and they suddenly spill all the beans about you, 
and they've already signed well, a no confidentiality. Protection. There's no protection. There's no protection. So if you're working for someone and they're doing, obviously doing wrong, surely you've got a, a duty to society. If they're affecting society with their wrongdoing, you've got a duty to tell. The rest of the world, in their wisdom, have decided not to be upholded or uh, to ignore the ban that Prince Charles has done. And we, once again, stand alone, as we always do, in lots and lots of things. So why should we give in? Why can't we stand alone? Well, we, can. we might be a little island, but come on, sure. let's stand up and be counted. James Hamilton Hislop, has the jury reached its verdict? Yes. And was it unanimous? No. The split was seven to five. And what was that verdict? No, the book should not be banned in this country. Thank you very much. So that means our jury have said, no, the Royal's Housekeeper's Diary shouldn't be banned in Britain. This was the last in the current series of Nothing But The Truth. So from us all here in Court 4, thank you for joining us. Good night. I think it's a brilliant victory for the British people, and I think it's a wonderful present for Wendy. And uh, I hope the Prince responds to the sentiments of the common people. <laughs>